Oh, yeah, that looks pretty good. It uh, says it, doesn't it? Well, I think it's got to say it today. Because? Who's yeah. that for? Well, it's for you, really. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. for our lovely Digby that's coming to see us today. Mm. In Isleworth, <laughs> South West London, yeah. Scott, nurse Nathan yeah. and receptionist Elle yeah. are putting up a brave front as they prepare yeah. to meet a new patient. Mm. And do I get any danger money for this? Nothing to worry about at all. Yeah, Nathan. teddy bear. Teddy bear. Don't worry about it, Nathan. Here we go. They're looking nervous, Elle. Hold up the sign. Hello. Hi. Mother and daughter Sharon and Amy have already warned them about the intimidating behaviour of their six-year-old Rottweiler, Digby. The problem is the Rottweiler has now developed a mass in his chest. Good boy. Good boy. Owner Sharon knew she had to find a vet who would take a risk. Digby at home is an absolute softy. He is sweet, he's affectionate and he loves a cuddle. But take him out anywhere to meet any other dog or anybody else but the immediate family, and that 50 kilograms of love turns into 50 kilograms of raw aggression. To ensure the safety of his staff, Scott has decided to be the only stranger in the consultation room. Even the camera crew must film from outside. Sharon, why don't you jump on that side? Yeah. There you go. Digby hasn't seen a bit for quite a few years, and uh, the last vet he saw didn't know what to do. Um, he was nervous of him, um, but luckily we found Scott. Sit down. Hello. No. Sharon came in to see me after she saw Bam Bam and the way that I treated him in the first series of Vet on the Hill. Calm down. But there's a massive difference between the feisty Bam Bam... Oh, no and the all-powerful 110-pound oh, Digby. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's okay. All right, settle down. I'm not doing anything. I'm not going anywhere. A lot of people would say straight away, that's an aggressive dog. It should be put down. And I understand that. But the situation here is that they got a dog that was friendly and happy and healthy as a puppy. It has grown up to be aggressive. And it's aggressive for one reason, because it's fearful. It is not innately evil. This dog is a friendly dog that gets scared, and he gets scared, and then he gets aggressive. We always make sure for him, we put a muzzle on and he's safe when he goes out. He's just being responsible, really. I'm trying to rush this relationship, which is never a good idea, is it? Okay. Because when we take him out, you get people to stare. And they do make some nasty comments. Why don't you put that dog down? Yeah. It makes me angry. No, we never ever put him down. We love him to bits. <laughs> we've had him as a puppy. We've shown no aggression to him whatsoever. So it was inbred from the mother. <laughs> Come out with him. <laughs> oh, all right, stop it. As Digby remains alert and agitated, Scott's still a long way from being able to examine the lump on the Rottweiler's chest. Soppy old thing, aren't you, eh? This job sometimes throws curveballs, and aggressive dogs come in, aggressive cats come in, and you've got to treat them, you've got to deal with them, so you've got to find a way to make it work. All right, all right, all right, all right. Three miles away in Richmond. What are you saying? Doesn't hurt, does it, Belle, when I touch your tail? Eh? Does it? Another of Scott's patients is also in need you of like help. That, don't you? Owner Kathy oh. is growing increasingly concerned about her two year old cat's broken mm. tail. Now oh, your poor tail. <laughs> the nasty injury happened while Bella was being cared for by a family friend. We were actually on a yacht off the coast of Corsica when it happened, and I got a call from Scott's practice to say that she had obviously suffered major trauma to her tail. I don't know, I was in shock, really, because you don't really expect to be hearing that sort of news. It's been a bit sad to see her tail now just drooping down off the back of her body. She can move it a little bit. She does have a bit of control, but um, not very much. I know, Bella. It's annoying, isn't it, that I'm standing by the door and you can't open it. What? So, with no sign of improvement, it's meant Bella and her brother, Mr Lucky, 
have been confined to barracks. You think that can stop me? It's probably your curiosity that got you into this scrape with your tail, wasn't it, Bella? But we'll never know, will we? OK, come on then, Belle. Come on then. In you go. Good girl. Right, there you go. Now it's time to head off to see Scott to find out if Bella's tail can be saved. OK, Belle, make yourself comfortable because now we're off, OK? Big adventure, Belle. Come on, then. I know. I know. At Isleworth, Scott's slowly trying to calm down the aggressive Digby so he can examine a mass on his chest. So, Amy, so tell me about the lump. Like, when did you first find it? Everything's about three or four months ago. Yeah, yeah. Ever since I've been trying to find a vet. Owners Sharon and Amy have not dared take the Rottweiler to a vet since their last visit years ago ended badly. He was very nervous, moving his arms around. He couldn't get up close to Digby. When he did, he spoke, and then Digby went berserk. Oh, he's a good, brave boy. After 30 minutes in the consultation room, Scott makes his first attempt to feel Digby's chest. Oh, it'll give you a bit of a tickle there, eh? Hey? Hey? Oh. OK, all right, I know. I'm not trying to win the argument straight away. I know, I know, I'm so. The whole time he's lunging at me, I'm just telling myself, be calm, don't react, don't move, stay still. Oh. All right. All right. Am I scared? Are you kidding? I'm bricking it. 50 kilograms of raw muscle power coming at you with bad teeth and growling. <laughs> and every instinct is saying, keep your distance. <laughs> but then I look at Sharon and Amy and I see their faces just literally saying, please help us. You are our last chance. After another 20 minutes, a breakthrough. But you know what I can see with him is I can really see that he is actually a sweetheart. I can see that. Scott finally appears to be gaining Digby's trust. You're trying to be aggro, but I can see you're sweet and lovely, really, aren't you? And look what you're letting me do. Oh, he's a sweet boy. Oh, he's a sweet boy. I mean, the good thing with Scott was that he did remain calm and he didn't have eye contact and he did manage to stroke Digby, which no stranger has ever done. I couldn't believe it, really. I'm just using some acupuncture points as well. There's one on the tip of his ears that just chills him out a little bit. They're always nice. Oh, I feel very honoured. I must say that when I was finally able to touch Digby for the first time, it was exhilarating. I mean, it was like touching a wild animal. And to give him a little scratch under the chin, honestly, it gave me goosebumps. It was amazing. What a handsome big pussycat. Eh? Big 50 kilogram big teeth pussycat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was lovely having the love in with Digby, but it was always going to end. And it was going to end in the form of a sharp needle in his butt. Do you want to put him into this corner maybe and then he can't yeah. push back? And that was never going to bring out his happy side. I went from hero to zero, but sadly it needed to be done to knock him out, but he wasn't impressed. Done. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm a, definitely a swear word that I can't say, aren't I, mate? But with Digby's be, adrenaline pumping out of control, the huge quantity of sedation is not enough. And Digby is still a threat. It was incredible to see just how much drugs this dog took. He was like a rogue elephant. It's all right. Nice sleepy time now. Mm? Mr. Dan. I'm sort of excited and nervous, Very though. Nervous. At St Margaret's in South West London, is, Scott's practice kids. manager, you know, Manus, like and his wife, you know, Zoe, are, are on a very important house call. Hello! Hello. Hello. Hey, guys! Hello. Zoe Hello. and Manus are also oh, sisters Hello. and here to adopt two puppies, a boy and a girl. Come on, puppy. OK. Uh, you better come in before they come out. <laughs> It's an emotional day for the puppy's mother, Bonnie, and Bonnie's own associate. You've caught them in a more active stage now. <laughs> who helped Scott bring the six puppies into the world after an emergency caesarean section. And what you're going to do is you're going to rub it really firmly on the chest, OK, really firmly and stimulate. 
Yeah, I've never done anything so terrifying in my life. <laughs> Six breathing puppy! Hey! Good job, well done. <laughs> Hello, gorgeous. With oh, such an unexpectedly large stuck. litter, <laughs> Scott the decided the Millers would add maker. another member to their family. What's going on down there? Oh, I just wanted to go. <laughs> I think a part of Bonnie is ready to let them go now. Oh, really? Yeah, really? They're, they're quite rough and tumble around her. So, so she's... you've come to save the day. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Who's, who's, who's is this one? Uh, this one is uh, yours, I think. Oh, so, yeah. hello, darling. Yeah. What are you waiting for? Baby, hello, baby. Hello. Oh, hello. Maz was completely in love with her puppy from the second she saw him. Because there was this real sort of nose-to-nose -nose sort of kissing, licking moment. It was like, get a room, guys. So, yeah, it was very, very cute. You having a little sleep? <laughs> so it's sleepy. my kind of puppy. Oh, likes an afternoon nap. I'll miss them so much. I'll miss them so much. I'll just miss their little bodies. They're, they're funny, hoppity, skippity running across the kitchen. And they're just so naturally happy. It's amazing. Hey, bye, Mama. Right. Bye, bye. bye. Mama. Bye. bye. Thanks, Mama. Bye, darling. Bye, darling. Thank you, Auntie Sophie. Have a lovely life. We promise we'll look after them, Bonnie, OK? We'll yeah. love them very much, just as you've done. Yeah, we She's will. Just checking them over. Oh, we promise. Can I say bye-bye? Bye-bye, Mummy. They're going, Bonnie. It is quite hard to hold her and see her watching them go out of the house. Bye, Bonnie. Come on, little They're girl. Going now, Bonnie. Not only are the puppies leaving their mum today, they're also being separated for the very first time. Yes. Say bye bye. See you soon. Bye, Broski. See you soon. <laughs> bye, bye. Bye. bye bye. Zoe's now taking her pup home to a very excited family. Walking through the door with the puppy is going to be unbelievable. The girls know the puppy's coming home today, so I'm going to have to make sure we dial down the crazy slightly as I walk in the house to make sure the puppy doesn't go, no thanks, I'm out of here. Some people waiting to see you. Just a couple of miles away in Isleworth, <laughs> Scott is attempting to examine a suspicious lump on Digby's chest. But despite sedation, the huge 110 pound Rottweiler is still putting up a fight. Today is all about getting to grips with the lump and actually just removing it. Normally there'd be a whole bunch of steps and examinations that we do prior to this kind of surgery. That's just not an option with Digby. So what I need to do today is knock him out and just remove the lump and hopefully send them home with good news. So after two injections of sedation, which would have been enough to knock out a rhino, he finally is calm enough that I can get an IV anaesthetic into him. One, two, three. Good boy. Now we've got to get him down the stairs, and I'm walking down thinking, this better not be cancer. Not only because it's dreadful news for any owner, but from Digby's point of view, how the hell am I ever going to treat this dog if it is cancer? So, fingers crossed, it comes out of something not to worry about. Oh, yeah, I can yeah. feel it now, yeah. yeah. It's quite a, quite a decent size. Yeah, it's a big one and getting bigger. Straight away, I think Sharon and Amy are going to be over the moon. They're going to be so happy. I mean, this is their boy. This is their love. And the fact that this is one surgery that we can perform, we can fix the problem straight away, and he potentially doesn't need to come back and see me, is good news. OK. Good boy. That's it. All done. Digby will now sleep off his anaesthetic in the recovery room, but Scott remains wary. Right, he woke up very quickly, <laughs> and I'm going to exit. Upstairs, boy. Sharon and Amy are waiting for the verdict. Hi, guys. Hi, Scott. So, you look very expectant and very worried, but in fact, it's all good news. It looks like a fatty growth, which is called lipoma, um, which is Really good news. I should be seeing smiles. I should be good. seeing smiles. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it is good news. It is good news, isn't it? I'm glad. It's nothing to worry about. I've put sutures that don't need to be removed. So literally, it's a case of taking him home yeah. and uh, hopefully living a, a happy and healthy life. I'm glad. I was yeah. worried. I thought it would be something more serious. Yeah. 
But I can see he's definitely got a kind heart in there. He's just quite misunderstood. He is a lovely dog. He's, he's fantastic at home. I'm good about him. But I'm just really glad that I've been able to hand back your beloved dog with my two hands intact. That's quite cool. yeah. <laughs> That's a plus side. And without a lump on his chest. Yeah. yeah. It means a lot of what you've done. There's no other vet that we actually see him. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's very kind. Thanks very much. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you're perfect. You're a perfect vet. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. Oh, thanks. Well, that, that, that honestly means a lot. I'm choked up a bit there. Lovely, thank you. No, I don't think I'm anything special. I'm literally just a vet doing his job, but uh, I'm glad that she was happy. All right, so he's just through here. Scott's going to feel even happier when Digby's on his feet and walking out the front door. Digby, baby. Digby, sweetheart. But he's definitely leaving that assignment to the immediate family. You are a softie, really. I think many people might find the fact that I treated Digby controversial. People might say that I shouldn't have given him any treatment at all. He's aggressive and he should have been put down. Good job. All right, ladies. Well, I would say to those people that he is a much loved member of Sharon's family. They adore him, but they know that he's got problems and they've put steps in place to ensure that he's safe and everyone else around him is safe also. So I would say to them, I'll look after Digby and you look after your own dog. All the best. Bye, diggers. <laughs> oh, come on. oh, man. Good boy. Oh, that'll take it out of a vet, that will. Jeez. Oof. Oh, good boy, good boy. Come on. How do you feel things have been going? She's been her usual demanding... Yeah. Uh, ..cat with attitude self, jumping <laughs> all over the furniture. At Richmond, it's time for Scott to decide the fate of Bella's fractured tail. What kind of movement have you seen, if any? Well, she does... Uh, the last two or three days, I have noticed she can lift it a bit, then it falls down. The two-year-old cat broke it while owner Kathy was away on holidays. We've still got a very floppy tail, haven't we? To actually dislocate a tail, pull two vertebrae apart, that would have really hurt and would have been done at quite some velocity. So generally it's a cat that's run, got caught in something, been run over, kept running, and the tail dislocates. What I'm gonna do is just do a quick deep pain test. Scott's checking the tail one final time for any signs that it can be saved. I'm digging my fingernail in there and there's not the greatest of response there. It should be really quite painful. And the fact that she isn't would suggest that there's a level of nerve loss or nerve damage. This tail, being that it's not being positioned properly, can be caught in doors, can be caught on fences, can be caught up trees. If she has a good tug on that again, it can go from a significant injury to an absolute nightmare. I do think in this instance that it is probably the best option to consider amputating the tail. So you poor little girl. If we don't take it off, I'll, every time she goes out, I'll probably always be worried that something's going to happen to it and happen to her because she can't control it. So that's exactly where we'll take it off right. from that point. Right. The risks of doing this procedure are that as there is a huge amount of nerves at the base of the tail there, um, you can damage their ability to do things like control anal tone. So it might be in worst case scenario that she becomes incontinent. That's the worst case scenario. I think, you know, we've just got to do it really. Not doing it to me doesn't seem like a serious option. Yeah. So you're poor little Belle. Yeah, but you're going to be fine, aren't you Belle? because you're a tough, tough girl, aren't you? Tough yes, cookie, you are. Yeah. sure. Bella will now be admitted to the clinic. Her momentous surgery is scheduled for tomorrow. It's funny, she's quite comfortable. Normally she doesn't like to be held, you know, by someone who's decided to hold her. She doesn't <laughs> mind if she's decided. I know, yeah. you're being affectionate <laughs> so, to the guy about to take your tail off. Oh. Not, not a great choice. Oh. Well, <laughs> well. At least she obviously yeah. trusts me, which yeah. is nice, isn't it? Just right?
At the Miller household, Scott has finally managed to get away from work and is now trying to keep his two little girls, Summer and Quinn, under control. They've been counting down the hours to meet their new puppy. I know what they're going for. Hey. Hey. No, it's our little puppy. The girls are so excited. They're so happy to see her. Um, she's such a friendly, happy little thing, and uh, I just know she's going to be so well loved. So cuddly. I know. I think she and likes cool. her friend. Cool. She is cool. She is very, very cool. cool. What are we going to call her? My kids are never short on ideas or words, and uh, the list of names that they came up with was. Uh, Fairly comprehensive. How about Skull Crusher? Oh, that's a good name for a little white fluffy dog. I am not yelling Skull Crusher across the <laughs> It does toughen her up for a bit. I'll vote Scully. Okay, Scully. I'll vote Scully. Scully it is. Yeah! But now the moment Scott's been worried about. Let's introduce him. His 10-year-old Border Terrier, Betty, is still recovering from spinal surgery. He's concerned she will feel displaced by the new arrival. Betty, this is your new little sister. Betty is my little girl. She's my baby. I had it before I was married, before I met Zoe, before we had the kids. So I need to make sure that she is looked after and that she isn't going to be too upset by this. And she is a social dog. She does like other dogs. And I have a feeling that this little one will bring a little bit of spark back to my beautiful dog. Yeah, it's a beautiful, comfy bed you've made, isn't it? Yeah! After I such a big day leaving ball. her mum and Did siblings, I it's time for Scully to settle in for the yeah. night. Here you go, babe. I just grabbed it out of the car. Nice. So to make sure it doesn't feel too foreign to her, we got the blanket that she's going to be sleeping with and rubbed it all over Bonnie, the mum dog. Like, oh, still feeding. Like a... Perfect. Oh, fingers crossed she's going to at least feel a little reassured. I think this is one very tired little monkey. Come on, Skullston. I have complete dread when it comes to crate trading this puppy. Betty was an absolute nightmare and screamed like a banshee for about five days. What do you think of your new little sister? Hey, isn't she gorgeous? But it was certainly a very good introduction into parenthood. So we are used to getting up early. I can't look any more tired. All right, let's let her have a rest. the first morning and our little lady here is settling in quite well. Next day at the Miller's house, the newest family member, Scully, is proving to be a perfect baby. <laughs> Every moment of the puppy's life is being captured on her video. <laughs> Amazingly enough, Scully was completely silent all night. So often puppies show a level of separation anxiety when they go to their new home for the first time. And that's why the first night can be quite monumental in all the bad ways. Um, they can cry for hours on end, they can sort of scratch at the cage, they can even injure themselves if they get upset enough. Just the fact that we'd had a good night's sleep <laughs> without another thing waking us up in the middle of the night was incredible. She's so clever. And everyone in the whole family, including Scully, is getting on brilliantly. My name's Kelly. She's a very good girl, Quinn. Did you know that? The kids seem to absolutely adore her already. The cat hasn't eaten her, and nor has the dog. So far, perfect. Puppy. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Here she is. Hello, Bella. You're being feisty, hey? There's a busy day ahead for Scott. Nurse Gina is bringing in his first patient, two-year-old Bella. Look at the eyes on it, hey? Amazing. The intrepid cat ran into trouble recently, breaking her tail. Take that beautiful tail away, but it's just floating in the breeze now. It's just an accident waiting to happen, so definitely the right thing to do to remove it. Doing a surgery like this on a beautiful cat, it is heartbreaking when you have to change their appearance forever is a real shame, but she will continue to be beautiful even when the tail's gone. So brave. But the cosmetic change in Bella is the least of Scott's concerns about the amputation. 
This surgical case is a difficult one because the dislocation is just so high up Bella's tail that it's so close to a little bottom and there's a huge amount of nerves around that area. And if you cut the wrong one, you can stop her feeling that back end area and you can lead to lots of problems, incontinence being one of them. And that's the last thing we need with Bella. And uh, bloody close to this poor little girl's bottom. Right, let's get this closed up now, shall we? Scott's pleased with the surgery, but he won't know for a few hours yet whether Bella has sustained any nerve damage that will affect her bowel or bladder function. Kathy tells me that Bella is quite the fighter. I feel that that tenacity is really going to help get her through and go on to live a happy life. Beautiful. Even with the little tongue. <laughs> Morning, Marianne. Morning, chaps. How are you? Doggy. Hello, doggies. Hey. How are you doing? You all right? All right. Do you want to come in the consult room? Yeah. We'll have a chat. Upstairs, on, lawn bowls enthusiast Marianne has cancelled today's lads. game to bring in her two King Charles Cavalier <laughs> Spaniels, <laughs> Harry good, and Toby. Well. One, two, three. Hello. Are you a happy boy? It's nine-year-old Toby good. that's worrying his owner. So obviously normally a very happy boy. I can see by that waggy tail, but tell me what's been worrying you. Um, oh, that. That. Yes, he does that. He bites the back foot and he really scratches on under the ear. OK. Have you noticed over weeks, months, years that that's actually got more and more frequent? Yes, particularly the last couple of months. He's been waking me up in the morning crying out. Very quickly, I can see in this consult that everything is pointing towards Toby having syringomyelia. Basically, their skull is too small for their brain. That brain gets pressurised, fluid then accumulates at the base of the brain in sort of cyst form. And as the disease develops, it does irreparably damage the spinal cord. They can become weak and even paralysed. It's a condition that we see a lot of uh, in this beautiful breed. Breed, yes. Oh, buddy. I can see the pain that this diagnosis is causing Marion, and it's absolutely gut-wrenching. Everybody loves Toby. Oh, bless. That's all right. I know. He's yeah. uh, been with me too long, haven't you? All right. Getting a bit much, isn't it? Eh? There you go. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. You're a good boy. There Have you a go. I can't brush it under the carpet. I have to face up to it and deal with it the best way for Toby. What we need to do is to, to diagnose it effectively. Yes. And the best way to do that is with an MRI. And from that, we can see how bad his syringomyelia is. Well, we've had nine and a half good years. We're going to have another four, I think. There you go. Yeah, it's very upsetting. You know, I hear you say you want him to last four years. And, and honestly, I, it breaks I my heart know. to think that he probably think won't. That, yeah. But you won't suffer because your mum won't let you. Marion will now take Toby to the Royal Veterinary College. Even if the MRI confirms Scott's diagnosis, he's not about to give up on the little spaniel. If it does turn out to be syringomyelia, then the outcomes can vary so much. And sometimes, not every time, but with the right medication, they can live a fairly full and comfortable life. I'm not going to let you guys down. All the best. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. All right, I'll be in touch. Bye, chaps. Off you go. Well you have to escape the vet now. There you See go. ya. Bye. Bye. At the Royal Veterinary College, Marion's King Charles Cavalier Toby is still air scratching uncontrollably as they wait for his appointment. Oh, steady, 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 steady. Come on. There you go. The friendly spaniel needs an MRI to determine whether he has the painful disease syringomyelia. It's a condition where the skull is too small for the brain, causing fluid to leak out and form cysts in the spinal cord, which can result in irreparable damage. It's very daunting coming here today with Toby because you know you're going to find out what is the matter. Reality is going to set in. But Marion is still hoping for a good outcome from the MRI today. 
Her cavaliers are a special link to her beloved daughter Jane, who died suddenly from a liver disease when she was just 29 years old. Once I was really low and I'm sat there, the tears are coming down, the dog just got on my lap and he's licking the tears from my face. And in the end, you have to laugh. They, they get you out of that down moment. So, um, yes, they mean the world to me. They really do. How, how is Toby today? Good? He's, he's, he's good, yes, but he's doing plenty of that scratching and uh, uh, what have you, you know. So. The RVC's Professor of Neurosurgery, but Holger Volk, will be supervising calm. Toby's uh, MRI today. And he's already met another friend. Absolutely. Look, look, he just can't wait, look. Would you mind coming with us? Yes, and we go that's ahead? lovely, thank you. Final year vet student Madison is assisting Holger. Bye-bye. I'm nervous. Anything can happen but I just feel that he's in the safest hands with all the experts. There you go, sweetheart. We have to find out. We have, I, I haven't got a choice. The MRI uses an extremely powerful magnet to generate images of the body. It's the most sophisticated diagnostic tool for neurosurgeons to evaluate problems with the brain and spinal cord. It's quite difficult to win a war if you don't know who your enemy is. And that's actually one of the most important things for us as owners, and I'm a pet owner myself, to understand what you're tackling. You can see that there's a lot of fluid within the spinal cord, and that causes the clinical signs he shows, you know, the scratching, the yelping. It's a very classic presentation. So now we have to just find the right treatment for Toby. Holger will now give Toby's anxious owner, Marion, the news. Actually, what we thought, um, yes. that's what Toby has. So oh, okay. he definitely has syringomyelia. Saying that, um, what is really important is that we treat him yeah. and not the image. Yes. So even if there looks like to be quite a bit of fluid within the mm -hmm. spinal cord, he still walks around quite yeah. well. Yeah. So we just have to yeah. fine tune together with Scott um, the right medication. We will most likely not eliminate completely this clinical science, but we will find a way to make, you know, those days when he's not so well a little bit better. Um, and, and he can have then hopefully a very normal life. And um, as long the other friend, his brother, is not uh, making his life sometimes a bit more challenging, he will be fine. I feel quite relieved, actually. <laughs> actually you know, yes, yes, it's, yeah, it's positive Good. and, um, you know, it's not all doom and gloom. No. One of the most important things for us as humans is to know what we what we face, right? Yes. Now oh, we, uh, now no, we know, now we know that. what that, yes. that um, you know, Toby has, Syringomyelia, and now we can actually tackle that. I'm sad that he's affected, but I'm glad I'm getting the answers. If you have the knowledge, you never know the next steps you've got to take. And the important thing is so that Toby doesn't suffer. Oh. All right, baby. All right. Hey, what happened? The beauty on being a vet is actually quite simple, is you can care for animals and you can care for people. There you go, Toby. We've seen inside your head. <laughs> and he definitely does have a little brain, doesn't oh, he? That's a lovely. beautiful little brain. Yes, clever like your mum, are you? <laughs> and I'm never sure what is the most important, but the beauty is that you can combine those two, and that makes it very special. It's time to go home. Come on. Here we go. Under Scott's supervision, Toby's new drug regime will begin immediately. The Spaniel will require constant checkups to make sure the disease and his pain are under control. There you go, there's a nice iris there. Do you fancy watering that one in? There you go, well done. There you go. Come on. Hello, sweet darling. How are you feeling today? I know you're not happy about that collar, are you? At the Richmond Hill practice, Nurse Emma has her hands full with feisty tail amputee, Bella. Bella, now, that's not going to work, my friend. Hmm? Can we leave the collar in place for 30 seconds? The two-year-old is recovering well from her big operation. She's eating, she's drinking, her vitals are all within normal limits, everything that we'd expect. 
During the surgery, Scott had to cut through a small part of Bella's spinal cord. The danger was if she sustained any nerve damage, it could have made her incontinent. I apologize, we took your tail, we're taking your dignity slightly, good girl, good girl. So everybody's been waiting for the evidence that Bella can toilet normally. She's had a poo, which in the nursing world is thumbs up. And that means Bella is free to go home with her relieved owner, Kathy. Hey, Kathy, Hello, how are you doing? Scott. You're all right? Yes, I'm fine. How are you? I'm good, yes, very well. And so is your girl. She's oh, just through in the yes. consult room, so yeah. follow me Great. through. Hi, Belle. It's been a big adventure, hasn't it, Belle? So this is her All right. oh new look goodness. back end. Oh my gosh, that looks great, doesn't it? So it doesn't this... even look like she's had surgery. So I was really amazed, very pleasantly so, to see that it all looks so good. I mean, it looks like it was done, you know, a couple of weeks ago. But I still think her name applies and that although yeah, she doesn't yeah. have a towel, she's still Bella, she's yes, still beautiful. she is, yeah. And but uh, it, I'm sure... She looks, looks great. I'm glad that you're happy with it because, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's a strange looking back yeah, end. but um, I mean, her fur will grow back, won't the it? The fur will grow back. Yeah. And certainly from this cat's point of view, <laughs> yeah, she's a feisty little madam, aren't you? She is. And you're going to be absolutely yeah, fine, yeah, aren't you? Yeah. Yes. Yes, she yes. Get me out of here before they take anything else off. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely feel like we've all made the right decision. Not only does Bella seem more comfortable now the tail's gone, but it means that her future is secured and now she can go out and about and enjoy the great outdoors yet again. We're all going to be happy. Thank you very much. My pleasure. All right. And Kathy can be sitting resplendent on her couch, sipping a nice cup of tea without a worry in the world. Go out again. Yeah. And one month later, a confident Bella is indeed back patrolling the neighbourhood. Come on, Bella. Without the hazard of her broken tail, she's now safe to roam as she pleases. She's just loving it. And she's just, her confidence, you know, hasn't taken a dent at all. There you go, back in one of your favourite places, aren't you? She's always been a small cat with a big attitude, and she's exactly the same. I have no regrets at all, and I think if any other cat owner was in a similar situation, I don't think they'd have to worry about it. It's just nice to see them going off and having adventures. But it's nice to see them coming back safely as well. Hey, Belle. Hey. <laughs> This is for Toby, all right? This is for Toby. Sit. It's also been four weeks since Toby was diagnosed with syringomyelia. There you go. Very good boy. Who's this? And Scott's dropping Who's in that? to so find out boy. if the Spaniel's Hello, new medication lady. regime is working. So yeah. how have things been going? It's so good. It, and to be honest, it, it, he takes his medicine as good as gold. Um, doesn't matter what you do to him, he doesn't complain, you know, he's just, just a beautiful dog. What I can see with him is that he's not scratching anywhere near as much no. as he was. And that's a very positive thing. He seems very responsive. You seem very reactive, don't you? You're happy for me to be here to see you? Absolutely. And I think that's what we need to harness. We need yeah. to make sure that your dog is happy and healthy every yeah. day. It seems to me that Toby is still living a full and, well, happy life. And all we need to do is accept that some days are going to be bad days and he's not going to be as comfortable. But as long as the good outweigh the bad, he's going to be able to live for a good deal longer. There are some tough decisions ahead. Yeah. But in the meantime, let's enjoy what a fantastic, fantastic. dog he is. Oh, yeah. And how lucky he is to have such yeah. a wonderful woman like you by his side. Yeah. What do you think about that? We're just going to make you as happy and healthy for as long as we can. Yeah? I feel I'm in safe hands. I've made that step to make the quality of his life better. To be honest, you can't do any more, can you? you? Can come and watch your mum play bowls. Come on then. All right, come, come on, on boys, then. Hopes. And to thank Scott for his help, Marion's decided to share with him the other love of her life, lawn bowls. Can 
Can I welcome you to Ashford, Scott? And thank you. Have a challenge. <sighs> challenge accepted. Marion is quite the gun when it comes to bowls, and I am quite competitive. All right, these feel right, like lucky grab bowls. Grab your weapon and yep. put those bowls on the green. Okay. I'm really looking forward to this. I've been the expert up to now with the veterinary stuff, and now it's time for her turn to shine. Bend your knees, Bend your and knees. you just step forward. Oh, blooming neck. Oh, Marion, you're a gun. Wish me luck. Yeah? Wish me luck. Wow, that's a, you've got a very nice action there. Oh, thank you very much. Absolutely rubbish. <laughs> the last few weeks have been really tough on Marion. There's been lots of medical appointments, lots of uncertainty, and lots of sadness. But what's really lovely is to see her, Toby, and even little Harry enjoying their time at the Bowling Green, just having some precious moments together, because honestly, that is the best medicine of all. Let's come and have a look and see. See how I've gone in my first yeah, bowls match ever? Absolutely. Well, there you go. You've got the shot. Unbelievably, I've won. I don't know how I've done it. Well, I do. It's called beginner's luck. Uh, Marion is such a great player. She's such a great lady, and it's been a fantastic day out. Mwah. Bless you, Marion. I suppose you'll be expecting a trophy. Of course. <laughs> <laughs>